morning. So I'm Stephen Kolber. Um, I'm excited about instructional video flip learning. I uh, run an academic research group called Edu Reading. We read an article a month and discuss it. And I'm also heavily involved in Teachers Across Borders Australia. I feel a conscious sub, self, subconscious urge to push chairs in as a teacher, so I'll stop the urge to do that. Um, just sort of be tidying as we speak. I don't know if that's just me. So those are the things I'm interested in today. I'm going to be uh, speaking in a very ill-prepared manner uh, that I started to think about on Wednesday night. So I'm talking about from where mentors should come. Uh, in my experience of schools, there aren't mentors, uh, let alone induction most times. And so I'm trying to think about how that could be done. Uh, so I'm trying to blend a bit of practice and a bit of policy, so obviously. It's, uh, let's see how I go. You can tell me as we go. So basically, for me, a school needs three things, mentoring, induction, and supportive intervention. Um, so there's always a small percentage of teachers that struggle with teaching a difficult class, year eight, year nines, whatever it is. And um, I think they need what have I called su supportive intervention. So ideally that would come from a coordinator or someone senior. Um, they basically need someone in their room rather than just someone mentoring and talking nicely about what good teaching involves. Uh, then of course there's just mentoring, which is that. So you need people to actually talk you through teaching in the same way you do as a student teacher once you're a professional. And even more so once you move into leadership. And then of course there's induction, which I think is probably where most schools hide behind. So they say, well, we don't have mentoring, but we have an induction program. And what that means typically is, you know, here's the online platform we use, here's the worksheets, here's where the photocopies are. It's very point and leave them to do it situation. Uh, and I think that causes problems as we'll discuss. So in my sort of slight movement into leadership positions this year and last year, uh, what, I, what I've seen is a blending of the three. So when I'm in an induction session or something that involves process and simple things, you know, here's where the photocopiers are, here's how we do reporting at our school, etc. If you're not mentoring properly, then what you get is people sitting in those rooms being spoken about, say, reporting, and they're asking questions that are basically mentoring questions, like what do I do with a difficult kid? Uh, how many times should I call home in a week? Should I call home? How should I call home? Really basic mentoring-based questions. And I think if we mentored properly, then a lot of those questions would be solved and student outcomes would improve dramatically. Um, so I would say, I've got two little metaphors here. Mm. Uh, most first year teachers are sort of a duck on the water and they are constantly pretending that they know what they're talking about and that they understand the acronyms and that they know what the hell's going on. Um, and of course they don't. And so it's only in induction, mentoring, and those sort of things where you get the real questions and the real concerns that they have. Um, and also from a leadership perspective, uh, at the head of the school, wherever that is at your school, you do actually realise the people that are struggling the most. And I think a lack of mentoring means that those uh, problems are then dealt with in a sort of difficult conversation manner rather than a supportive mentoring conversation spot. So uh, I've been researching middle, re middle leadership, uh, which is very poorly researched. Uh, mostly and partly because of the policy level which says uh, it's not neatly defined what a middle leader is and what responsibilities they might have. So I'll take you through a little bit of that. Um, Dr. Christine Grease is sort of uh, kind of the only one of very few people actually looking at it actively. Um, so we've got definitions here which I'll skip over, but basically a middle leader is anyone that's not a principal and is slightly above a teacher in essence. Uh, and obviously there's a lot of research about principalhood and what, make, what being a good principal involves, but there's very little anywhere between that. So a lot on teachers, a lot on principals, and nothing in between. So, uh, a list of formal, what these might look like in different jurisdictions is widely different, what a middle leader might involve, um, but I think there's sort of three core skills that are worth speaking to. So, at my school at least, in between the principals and the teachers, you've got assistant principals, heads, heads of learning, year level coordinators, and then learning specialists and, as George and myself, are middle year literacy and numeracy support people. Uh, and I would say APs are ideal for induction, but not ideal for mentoring, because most of them don't have active classes anymore. So they sort of miss that piece. Heads of learning, again, they're thinking mostly of processes and structures and probably aren't teaching as much as your lay teacher. Year level coordinators are very useful for the intensive support. So if you have a year eight class that you can't handle, Ideally, you would have a mentor that was a coordinator at that level or a similar level to support you. 
Uh, but ideally it would be these very new roles. So learning specialists in Victoria are only two years old, maybe three, if I'm pushing it. Um, middle year, the Milan stuff is started last year. So these are new roles that are, would be ideal candidates for mentoring. Uh, but of course that would require time and money to support that. Uh, to be successful in middle leadership, you know, you need principal support, professional development, a strong culture, enthusiasm, drive and knowledge. Uh, I think most middle leaders that I know have all of those things. And essentially the affordances, the good things that you have as a middle leader is that you're actually still teaching and therefore um, Christine, Dr. Christine Grease refers to it as uh, being like a spy. You're somewhere between the leadership and the teachers and you can kind of fit within both worlds. And so that to me makes it ideal that they would be the people intervening in these students, in these teachers, young teachers lives rather. Uh, and basically all of the leadership discussion that we talk about is avoiding difficult conversations by having adult conversations. And to me mentoring should be that adult conversation between two adult professionals learning and discussing and that would avoid all the difficult conversations of, you know, bad incidents that happen when there are lack of behaviour management and those sort of things. So, uh, promising signs so the Andrews government in Victoria put forward $73.4 million to support a pilot project based on mentoring. Importantly, uh, it would cut, involve coverage for the mentor and the mentee, uh, but noted, notedly it is in uh, North, East and North and Western suburbs. So obviously there's part of you know, teacher retention being an issue there. So there's a political element to it as well. Uh, but I would hope that in our new VGSA, our new agreement, that we would have this be covered an actual, rather than just a one period reduction for first year teachers, uh, a committed role for mentors and mentees and a time set aside for that to happen. And that's me. Thank you very much.